Can you guys hear me? Okay, great, great. Again, it's a blessing uh, to be here one more time in the name of our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ, who is and who should be the head of um, all of our lives. And so I truly thank God for um, all of you this morning. Again, we do realize it is Labor Day uh, weekend, so we thank God. First of all, thank God for all of you that labor, uh, not only in the secular world, but also um, for Christ's sake, uh, thank God for those of you who serve in our military as well. We thank God for you as well. I want, uh, want to thank God for your pastor and those that are uh, in Louisiana at this moment and uh, definitely representing the kingdom. Truly thank God for those uh, individuals as well. And I definitely don't want to hold you any longer than uh, necessary. So if you have your Bible or your electronic uh, device, whichever one you uh, choose to use. Um, our scripture this morning is going to be coming from Genesis, the book of Genesis, chapter 11, verses 27 through 32, and then we're going to tiptoe right over into chapter 12, verses 1 through 3, and I'm going to show you prayerfully how um, these verses, how they go together, and how they speak to what it is that I'm going to speak to you uh, this morning. Genesis chapter 11, verses 27 through 32. And then after verses uh, 27 through 32, then we're going to look at Genesis chapter 12 and verses um, 1 through 3. And again, if you just bear with me for just a little bit, I'm going to show you how all of that goes uh, together. When you found Genesis chapter 11, verses 27 and 32, read it from the New King James Version, and I'll just briefly read these scriptures, and then we'll jump right into the sermon uh, this morning. And it reads as follows. Uh, this is the geology of Terah. Terah begot Abram, Nahor, and Haran. Haran begot Lot. And Haran died before his father Terah in his native land in Ur of the Chaldeans. And then Abram and Nahor took wives. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife, Milcah, and the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, and the father of Iscah. But Sarai was born, or, or barren, I should say, and she had no child. And Terah took his son, Abram, and his grandson, Lot, and the son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law, Sarai, and his son, Abram's wife, and they went out with them from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to the land of Canaan, and they came to Haran, and they dwelt there. So the days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. Now chapter 12 and verses 1 through 3 reads as follows. Now the Lord said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation, I will bless you, and I will make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. God's word for God's people, and God's word is already blessed. For a few moments this morning, I want to use this as a subject, something for you to think about, not only today, uh, but in the weeks to come and even in the months to come. I want to talk about for just a few moments why it is necessary to walk with God by faith. Why it is necessary to walk with God by faith. Now, typically, we get the last part of that statement right, and we hear that constantly, walking with God by faith. But something that, if you're like myself, I tend to struggle with sometimes is, why is it necessary? Why is it necessary to walk with God by faith? How come I just can't walk? How come I just can't take a stroll with God? Why does it have to just be necessary? Well, we're going to find out here in just a few moments in, um, in our text this morning. But when we think about uh, Abram, who later, uh, his name is changed to Abraham, few men other than Jesus Christ himself 
have impacted the world and its history as did the man that is introduced in our text this morning. In our day, Abram, or Abraham as we come to know him, is held in high regards. The book of Hebrew and also the book of James recorded that Abraham was a friend of God. Fourteen chapters of the book of Genesis are devoted to Abraham's life, which begs the question, why study a man who lived over 4,000 years ago? Now, not only is he known as a friend of God, and he lived over 4,000 years ago, but 14 chapters in the book of Genesis alone is devoted to this one man's life. So again, it begs the question, why study this man? And I'm glad that you asked that question this morning. Because his life, Abram's life, or Abraham as we've come to know him, his life teaches us why it is not necessary to walk with God by faith. Not only just walking with God by faith, but why it is so necessary. Romans 1 and 17 tells us, For therein is the righteousness of God, revealed from faith to faith, and it is written that the just shall live by faith. And so since many of us had trouble living by faith, we need to hear what the Bible has to say about a man who deemed it necessary to walk with God by faith. Now, if many of you will be honest with yourselves, it's easy to just walk, but to walk with God by faith, and when you think about this Christian journey, there are times where God is directing us. There are times when God wants me to do things that I don't necessarily understand why I have to do what I have to do. There are times I can't believe God is telling me that I have to love people who mistreat me, people who talk about me, people who don't necessarily like me. And the sad part about it is they don't even know who I am. And they've already made up their mind. They've already got this picture about me and everything. And yet, God says, I still have to love them in spite of. And I'm thinking to myself, God, why is that necessary? How come I can't treat them the same way that they treat me? But when we look at the text this morning, we are going to discover why it's so necessary. If you're going to walk on this Christian journey, if you're going to be with God, why it is so necessary to walk with God by faith. And we're going to notice three things here about the life of Abram who later became Abraham. And we're going to look at three of his years. And the first years that we're going to look at is his wretched years. Let's look at the first years of Abraham's life. And they are known, if you look here at the text, his wretched years. There was a time in the distant past that the man that we know as Abraham, who we're reading right now in the text, there was a time in the past when he was a nobody. Now, I know you may be sitting there saying, I cannot believe this. Abraham, who sacrificed his son, who went to the mountaintop, who left his home country, didn't know exactly where he was going, and you're telling me, brotherhood, there was a time where he was known as a nobody? Yes, he was. There was a time when he was known as a nobody. I want you to think about where the Bible said that he was living at the current time. He was living in a place called Ur, and if you think about Ur, if you do the history, the study, and I'm just going to give you a quick synopsis, it was a wretched place. Now again, I want you to think about this. The guy that we know today as Abraham and where he used to live at, at the current time of the text, was a place full of all kind of evil doing. Now that doesn't sound like the guy that we know. Why in the world? that Abraham that we know would want to live in such a place as that. So there was a time in Abram's life that was filled with darkness, death, and despair. And before you get your rocks out, before you get your stones out, and get ready to crucify uh, Abram, who later name was changed to Abraham, before you say, man, that's a shame. Man, I wouldn't be caught living in a place like that. I want you to think about this. What was your life like before God got a hold of you? Because see, at the time of this text, this was the life of Abram before God got his hands on him. 
And his life was filled with darkness, death, and despair. And brothers and sisters, if you really think about it, truly our lives were no different before God got his hands on us. Before God got his hands on us, our lives were filled with darkness, death, and despair. Before Christ, we must all admit that we were lost and on our way to hell. Before Christ, we were unredeemable. But thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, he brought us from darkness into his marvelous light. Do you not realize that you can be physically alive and yet spiritually dead? All of us are here in this room this morning, and we are here physically. But whether you realize it or not, there could be some of us here this morning while we are here physically, yet at the same time we could be spiritually dead. You may say, well, I still don't understand that, Brotherhood. Have you ever gone to work on Monday morning, and you're there physically, but your mind is somewhere else? You're in the classroom, and your body is there physically, but your mind is somewhere else. You're not focused on the task at hand, because your mind is somewhere else. But physically, you're sitting in the classroom. Physically, you're there at your particular job. And it's no different. We could be here and be here physically, but spiritually we could be dead. But thank God we are no longer children of wrath, but we are children of God. And Abram's life this morning, my brothers and sisters, Abram's life teaches us that before God got his, got his hands on us, that we had a wretched life. And so there should be no reason why we should look down on anybody else, why we should turn our nose up at somebody else who may not be living the life that we're living right now because all you have to do is think about what was your life like before God got a hold of you. And you may say this morning, well, I wasn't on drugs, I wasn't hanging out, I wasn't doing this, and I wasn't doing that, and thank God for you. So this should be your testimony. Lord, thank you for keeping me from being on drugs. Thank you for keeping me from hanging out with the wrong crowd. So those were the wretched years of Abram. But now let's continue to look at his years and his life. Let's look at the wasted years. I just talked to you about the wretched years of Abram. And now let's talk about the wasted years. When we look here at our text this morning, when we think about the Bible, we discover that Abram stayed too long in earth. He stayed too long with his own people. In verses 1 of chapter 12, if you go back through the Bible and uh, the scripture that I just read to you, uh, brothers and sisters, you will see and you will begin to understand, and if you're not careful, you will think that this is the first time that God had been calling Abraham, or Abram, as the Bible says at this day and time. And again, as I said before, later on his name was changed. But if you're not careful, you would think that this is the first time that God was calling Abram in the ministry. But I challenge you to go back and reread the scripture. For the text said God had been calling. He had been calling Abram. But Abram stayed too long with his own people. And God had been calling him, but he wouldn't leave his family, nor would he leave his old ways. Don't that sound like some people that we know? God is calling them. God has called you and I once upon a time. And if we be honest with ourselves, before we ended up where we're at right now at this very moment, for a lot of us, it wasn't easy to leave our old ways. It wasn't easy to leave our families. So again, I want to make sure, don't be so critical of individuals who may not necessarily get this thing that we call Christianity from the first sermon that they hear, or the first small group. Because I can tell you, it can be hard sometimes to leave your family. It can be hard to leave the old ways. And brothers and sisters, I want to challenge you this morning. I want to remind you this morning that God has been calling you and I. God has been calling so many others 
to leave their old ways. God has been showing us signs, and yet we still, for many of us, we still refuse to leave those old ways or those people to come and walk with God by faith. Abram was called to leave his region. Abram was called to leave his religion and his family. He was called to follow, he was called to a faith, and he was called to a future. And I think I need to repeat that one more time. Look what God is doing with Abram in the text. He's calling him to follow, he's calling him to a faith, and yet he's calling him to a future. And brothers and sisters, this morning I just want to share this with you. You cannot be called to follow, you cannot be called to a faith, and you cannot be called to a future while looking back, wanting to stay back. If we're going to move forward, if we're going to serve God, if we're going to represent the kingdom, you cannot move forward serving Christ, looking back, wanting to live back. If you don't believe me, think about when you're watching football game. We're in the midst of football season right now. And I don't know about you, but when I'm watching TV, I like for it to be peaceful and quiet. If you're going to talk to me, please talk to me during the commercials. But when the game is on, don't talk to me during the game. I want to hear what the referees have to say. I want to see the play. And have you ever been watching a football game or a basketball game with somebody, or maybe even a baseball game or whatever your favorite sports may be, and the individual that you're watching the game with, every time somebody either scores a touchdown, hit a home run, they're racing, running track, or swimming. That individual that you're watching the game with, they're constantly telling you, I used to do that. I used to move like that. I used to run like that. Man, have you seen me back in the day? And you're thinking to yourself, if you're like me, first of all, man, I wish you would be quiet while I'm trying to finish watching the game. But here's the problem with that individual. Their problem is they're still looking back wanting to live back. That's why they continue to tell you what all they used to do. And that may be well and true that they used to run like that, score touchdowns like that, make basketball goals like that and all that good stuff. But the matter of the fact is, they've got to come out of that time frame and live in reality. And so if we're going to follow God, you and I cannot follow God wholeheartedly looking back, wanting to live back. When you look at chapter 11 and verse 31, and if you look at, uh, if you look there, you see a lot of they and them in the chapter. Right here in the text, you see a lot of they and them. But I want you to notice something here in the text. When you get to chapter 12, when you get to chapter 12, the first thing it says, now the Lord. Now, toward the end of chapter 11, you have a lot of they and them. But when you get over into chapter 12, it says, now the Lord. So how do we get from they and them to now the Lord? Why is that so significant? And here's the reason why it's so significant. If, it, if you and I are going to walk with God by faith, then we have to understand, brothers and sisters, that if we're going to be with God, you got to leave them alone. If you're going to get to thee, in chapter 12, you first of all got to leave them behind. And for so many of us, that's a hard thing to do, whether it be friends and even sometimes family. And I'm going to talk a little bit about family here in just a moment and show you how all that wraps together and why it's so necessary on this journey to walk with God by faith. But if we're going to be with thee, first of all, we've got to leave them. If God is going to get glory out of your life, if God is going to get glory out of my life, first of all, we must come out from among them. The reason why many of us find it so hard to have joy in our lives, to have happiness in our lives, is because we still want to be around them. Have you ever had a good day? And the, your day is just going so well, and then all of a sudden you meet up with somebody who has such a negative attitude. You ask them how they're doing, and by the time they get through telling you all about their problem and how negative they've been, you begin feeling bad yourself. There's some people, I have to be honest, I don't even like to ask them how they're doing because I'm afraid if I do, by the time they're so negative and they tell me, I feel just as bad as they do. 
And so when we look here at the text this morning, if you want to get to thee, you got to leave them. You got to leave them alone. You got to come out from among them. You cannot stay with them. I cannot stay with them. And so as we continue to look at the wasted years, partial obedience is full disobedience. And until you have done all that God has said to do, brothers and sisters, we haven't done anything that God has said to do. And Abram didn't follow the Lord's command until the death of his father, Terah. I want you to think about this. God kept calling him. God repeatedly kept calling him. Because remember, Scripture said God had been calling him. But the Bible tells us, Scripture tells us, he did not follow God's command until the death of Terah. Now, when you look at the word Terah, the word Terah means delay. So here's my question to you. So what or who is your Terah this morning? Who's standing in your way of doing what it is that God has called you to do? And then you may be here this morning saying, well, I'm not standing in anybody's way, brotherhood, and I'm glad that you're not. So here's my other question. If nobody's standing in your way, whose way are you standing in? Are you preventing somebody from being a small group? Are you preventing somebody from taking part in the worship service? Praise team. I pray that you're not. But who's the terror in your life that's keeping you from following God and doing what it is that God has called you to do? And the sad fact of the matter is, brothers and sisters, there's some people in our lives before we can follow God, there are some people who have to be just like Tara. They have to die. There's some friends that will have to die. There's some family members that will have to die before you and I can do what it is that God has called us to do. The Bible tells us that if any man comes after me, he must first of all deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. We can't follow God until we die to what we want and let God take control of our lives. When Terah died, that's when Abram finally moved forward. When you allow the Terah to die in your life, that's when God will begin to move forward in your life. Is there a Terah that's keeping you from coming to Bible class? Is there a terror that's keeping you from being a faithful tither this morning? Is there a terror that's keeping you from Sunday school? I told you earlier that the name terror means delayed. Delayed also means stationary. And when you're stationary, you can never be missionary. Faith means to keep walking even when you don't have a map. Keep walking even when you don't know where you're going. Faith is not about getting what God wants you to have, but it's about accepting what God sends because God already lives in our tomorrow. Here's the last thing, and I'm going to wrap it up with you. We looked at the wretched years of Abram. We looked at the wasted years of Abram. Now I want you to look at the wonder years of Abram. When you think about the time of this text and when this text was written, Abraham at this time was 75 years of age, and God tells him that I'm going to make you a great nation. How is God going to take a man who is 75 years old, and when you think about 75 and not being disrespectful, but in our day and time, in our culture, when you think about 75, that's old. Retirement. You're going home to hang it up. And yet God is telling this man, I am going to make you a great nation. He says, your name will be great. God says, I'm going to bless your seed. Wait a minute. 75. And God is talking about blessing a seed. But here's the problem. Abram can't have kids. Sarah can't have kids. She's 65 years old. For those of you who have children right now, what would you think if God told you at the age of 65 he was going to bless you with a seed? And yet, at the time of the text, she's 65, 
and it seems medically impossible to have children at the age of 65. But I did read in scripture where the Bible said, with God, all things are possible. So you may ask the question as I wrap this up, what does that have to do with the wonder years? Brothers and sisters, in order for us to get where it is that God wants us to be, we have to leave our past. Sometimes we have to leave those who we love and cherish the most, especially if they're not going down the same path that we're going. We have to leave them, trust God, and follow God. And in our following God, brothers and sisters, we may not necessarily always know where we're going, but we can trust the fact that God will not only uh, take care of us, but where God leads, he will provide. I truly thank God for you today. Thank God for uh, you allowing me uh, to be here today. And I pray that you got something out of the sermon today, looking at the years of Abram, uh, his wretched years, wasted years, and wonder years, and each of them, as he goes through those steps and goes through those journey, go through the journey and everything, brothers and sisters, again, it's necessary. Things that you and I may think are unfair, things that may hurt you and I along the way. I do want to remind you of this, and then I'm going to leave you and take my seat. It's not that God is being a mean God. It's not that God doesn't have anything to do but to make you and I miserable or to cause us to cry. But there are things that God allows us to go through because it's necessary. It's necessary that we go through the things that we go through, whether that's losing some family members along the way in this journey, some friends that we may have to part ways with in order for us to be who it is that God wants us to be and to be where it is that God deems fit for us to be. May God bless you today and may God keep you is my prayer.